Okay. Yay. I'm going to make you the host and then you will have, you will have the floor. My, my love. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love it. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice, nice. to see you, Nikki. Oh, too. you too. So I'm so excited to be speaking on this topic because I truly believe that we, at some point during our journey, we're going to have to really look at our organizations and our businesses and decide how do we continue to grow. And so I think right from the very beginning, this is a question um, that a lot of us have. And I think this is one approach that we can take to make sure that we're constantly growing. So... I am a firm believer that we have the best products on the planet. We just do. Um, I have been using Young Living for close to 10 years now, and I am so thankful for Melissa Kohler because she introduced me to them many, many moons ago. And I am so thankful for them because we are able to assist and help people from birth until until they leave this earth, right? And so it's our jobs to make sure that we are continuously educating and sharing and making sure that we stay educated ourselves so that we can best assist those around us. So we need to always have this growth mindset. So I'm gonna have you take out a piece of paper. You're gonna be an artist, a little mini artist. And I know for me, I'm not an artist, but. I promise this will be easy. You can make it stick figure, but just take out a piece of paper. And if you're at a place right now where you don't have access to a piece of paper, that is totally okay too. Um, just you'll have it in your mind, the visual. I am a visual learner. I don't know about you. Anne Marie, are you a visual learner? <laughs> Hi, I am, it, I am very much a visual learner. Yes. So there are many yeah. different types of learning, right? We can see it. We can like read a post. We can see someone de demonstrate it. We can listen to it like on a podcast. I just believe for me, I love to have a visual so that I can actually mm -hmm. see it and I can visualize what's taking place. So many yes. moons ago, I don't know if you know Shelby Pock. She's one of my dearest friends. Um, she was sharing with us about another way to look at markets. And so we have something that's called cold, warm, and hot markets. And when she shared this visual with me and with the crowd that we were with, I will never unthink about it. I think about it daily in my business. I actually use it in my business daily. And it is something that has allowed my business to continue to thrive over the last 10 years. Um, and I think that you're going to benefit from it as well. So get out your piece of paper. And what I want you to do is you are going to draw grass. You're going to draw ground cover, whether that's flowers. Um, but leave a lot of room at the top. So on the bottom, it's just going to be grass. It could be like little rocks, little succulents, however you want to make it. And then you're going to draw a tree. So your tree needs to have its roots underneath the ground. It needs to have the trunk. Needs to have some branches. Needs to have some leaves. And then... After you get done drawing your tree, your beautiful tree, I know that you are an artist. Um, I want you to decide what kind of tree it's going to be. It does need to be a fruit tree. So it could be a peach tree, a plum tree, apple, orange, lemon, lime, whatever you choose. For me, I'm going to go with orange. So my example here is going to be an orange tree. And it's just because this is the way that Shelby explained it to me. <clears throat> so I don't know where you're at in your journey, but it does not matter if you are just beginning, like today you just decided that you were going to start this business, or if you are a royal crown diamond. All of us are actually having the same mindset when it comes to, we always are going to need to have an ever-growing business to have sustainability. And so this is one way that we can definitely look at that. 
So on your tree, I want you to make it a big, beautiful tree with fruit literally everywhere. Okay. So your plums, it's just going to be like the best harvest ever. So just pretend that that tree is very fruitful. It has provided so well. So you're going to have low bearing fruit. You're going to have fruit that goes out to the outer edges and the middle and all the way up. Very, very, very high. Okay. Anne-Marie, what kind of tree did you decide to draw? I also did an orange tree. Okay, good. Perfect. Yep. yep. I love that. And, and Mandy, <laughs> I see that you're on too. What kind of tree did you draw? I don't know if she can hear me. Okay, we'll just continue on. She might just be hearing with a, a car full of people. <laughs> All right. So right. what I want you to think about when you look at your tree, I want you to think of this as a potential organization that you have that is fruitful. It's standing right in front of you. Okay. An apple tree. I love it. Okay. So we've got apples and oranges. <clears throat> So this tree in front of you is your potential organization. Some of them you know, and some of them you do not know. So some of the apples maybe came first, and maybe you've seen them every day. They're out there watering. And maybe those top oranges or apples um, <clears throat> were hidden in the back, and you've never seen them before. And maybe today you see them, right? So just kind of visualize this tree, how fruitful it is, and how amazing it is. All right, so on the bottom, I want you to think of this tree as your hot market. And I don't know about you, but let me first of all take a step back and share this with you. So when I first started Young Living and I started loving these products, I was like, oh my goodness, they are working for our family. I could not imagine my life without them. And I want the whole world to know about these. I want all the people that I love and care about to know about these. And I want people who have families that could greatly benefit from these. So I would not stop talking about them. And I thought, I thought that because I loved these and because I knew that I wanted everyone to know about them, that everyone that I loved and care about would want them too, and that they'd want to tell everybody that they loved and cared about, about them too. But I was very wrong, right? Our goals sometimes, most of the time, are not other people's goals. And so sometimes it like hits you right here where you're like, oh, I know what I have, and I know that it's so good, and why won't you just listen and want it too, right? Sometimes it just takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more love and serving to help people understand how amazing Young Living is too. Okay. So we're going to go back to our tree. And I'm going to tell you in the beginning, I had shared and I thought that my favorite people, some of like my best friends would want to jump on this journey with me. And at some of them, it took like four or five years before they were like, hey, gosh, you are still talking about these four and five years later. I think that they're pretty good. And I think that I, I'm ready to jump on board. And then I had someone in my family who was like, don't ever bring these around me again because I am so allergic to any aromas. I just cannot have them near me. And so the people, again, that you think are gonna want these, maybe they don't want them. And don't let that hurt your feelings. You are here to serve everyone, right? It goes far and very far beyond the people that are the closest to you, okay? So when you look at your tree, your apple and your orange tree, that's very fruitful, those, really low apples and those really low oranges that are like right here in that reach, that is your hot market. So you want to think of this as the people that you know, the people that you love and you care about, the people that you have known for years, upon years upon years. Um, Rosemary, do you mind putting yourself on mute for me? I'm getting an echo on my side. Thanks, Lev. All right. So these are going to be the people that you love and you care about so much. These are going to be family, friends. It could be your childhood friends. It could be your neighbors that you talk with and you guys go on walks together. It could be your nail lady that you see once a week. Like 
These are your people, right? These are people, and this is the big part. These are people that already trust you. You've already built that trust with them. So it's going to be a lot easier when you share something that you love because they already innately trust you. And most of the time they're going to say, goodness, like you are so passionate about this and you're telling me that I need this and I'm going to believe and I'm going to buy it too. So these are the people that it's a lot easier to really have that relationship with and share everything with and for them to trust you right up front. Okay. These are the low bearing fruit. This is where you can walk up to the tree and you can grab that fruit and you can twist it right here. There is literally zero effort. Okay. Now we're going to move to your warm market. This is the fruit. This is your apples and your oranges that are right in the middle of that tree. Okay, some are going to be in the heart of the middle of the tree. Some are going to be on the outer. You can kind of reach them. You are going to have to stand a little bit on your tippy toes because they're not as accessible as your low bearing fruit. These are the people that you have known a little bit. Maybe it was years ago. So think about high school. It's different years ago for each of us, but you build trust with them somewhere along the line. They know you, they know your name, they remember your family, but maybe it's been 10 years since you've talked to them, but you've already had that engagement with them. It could be a, a group of girls or women that you've had in your Bunko group. It could be um, a yoga class that you take and maybe you see these people every week, but maybe you've only had like side conversations with them, but you've started to build trust with one another and you've gotten to know each other. So this is your warm market. It's going to be a little bit harder to engage with them, to establish that trust with them, but it is a lot, um, a lot more effort, a lot more grit than it is with your low bearing hot market. And then you've got the very top of your orchard, you've that little beautiful piece at the very top where you're like, those have been growing for some time and those are gorgeous and they are ready, but you cannot re reach them. You have to go outside into your garage. You've got to grab the ladder. You've got to pick it up. You've got to pull it, <clears throat> excuse me, out into your orchard and you've got to place it up and actually it's going to take a heck of a lot of effort for you to get up on that ladder to reach as much as you can to grab that fruit and twist it and pull it off. This is your cold market. This is people where you need to build all the trust with them. This is people on social media that you've never even met. These are maybe people when you go to Starbucks every day and they have the same schedule as you and you both walk in grabbing your coffee at the same time, but you've never even had a conversation with each other. It might be maybe you're going to the gym and you have a brand new aerobics coach or a spin class coach that you've never met before, but you know that you're going to start engaging with them. So this is going to be people where you need to build that trust. So I love this analogy of this fruit tree because it gives a really good visual for you to say, goodness, I know when I have low bearing fruit, it's really easy when I'm hungry to go out there and to just grab that fruit and eat it. Then if I'm wanting something that looks a little bit more ripe, a little bit more done, and it's in the middle of that tree, and I'm going to have to have a little bit more grit, a little bit more time that I'm going to need to take to get that. And then maybe at the very top, that orange or that apple has been growing the longest. And I know that it is the ripest and it's going to be so incredible for my apple pie or maybe my fruit salad. And it's going to take me a heck of a lot more grit in order to get it. So, you know, now like looking at this visual that sometimes we have people in our life where we know that we share something with them. They're going to innately trust us and they're going to just do whatever we say because they love us and they trust us. You know, then that you have people, maybe you know them from years ago, you built that trust, but now it's like re-engaging with them. And then you have your audience that's at the very top of your tree. That is your cold market that you have to really do a lot of work with. Okay. So I love this analogy because I call this my serving tree. I truly believe that we were meant to serve people and love them well. And when we do that, we will always have a fruitful business. If we come into this and we say, we are here to serve people, to love them where they are, to give them education, 
to allow them, uh, to allow us into their life, what an honor it is for us to be able to serve people, right? So you can call this tree whatever you want. But here's where this comes into your business. What you're going to do is on that same piece of paper, you want to have three lines. You want to have one line for hot market, one line or one column, however you want to design it. And one, one column or one line for hot, warm, and cold markets, okay? Your hot market, you want to write down, and I tell people whenever I'm coaching with them or sharing with them this analogy or this visual, I, I let them know if you're just starting out, start out with one person, one to three people in each of these columns. But if you've been doing this for a while, and we know um, a majority of us have, let's push ourselves just a little bit farther and let's make that list 10 people each, okay? Um, our, I call it my serving list. My serving list, I want to serve these people and I want to honor them and love them where they are and support them on their wellness journey, whatever that may look like. And so I put 10 people on each list. And what I do is, when I know that I have helped someone, if I have someone in my hot market, maybe they know me really well and they love me because we're family or we're friends or we've been doing Bunko for eons, but they just don't have Young Living products in their home yet. That's why they're in my hot market. So once I have someone that's in my hot market, one of those 10 people, and over time, they decide, hey, yes, I'm ready. I want to grab Ninja Red because you talk about it till you're blue in the face every day. I'm ready to do it. I'm going to move them completely, completely off of my hot market because now they have Young Living. Now I get to serve them in another way. I'm going to serve them and support them on their journey. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am now going to take someone from, from my warm market and I'm going to move them into my hot market. And the way that I do that is I get to know them a lot better. So these are all very organic relationships. I will never cold message someone, right? That just feels really icky. My whole approach over the last 10 years has always been to be genuine, to be myself and to be, to have an organic growth. Okay. Um, and that just comes with consistency, with love, with sharing, with reaching out and checking on people and just providing really good customer service. So then the way to do it for your cold market, I encourage you guys have 10 names on there. And the way that you want to do this is I'm going to ask you, Mandy, tell me one thing that you're passionate about in life. It could be you're a surfer. It could be you're in a black belt in karate. It could be you're a gardener. It could be that you raise chickens and you live on a farm with a hundred chickens. I don't know. Tell me. I'm I'm really wanting to know one thing that you're passionate about. Um, probably I enjoy like cooking and gardening. So good. so yeah. good. <clears throat> Perfect. And then Rosemary, what's one thing you're passionate about? You know, something simple, like I am just passionate about being a mom. Yeah. It's a hard job. It is the a hardest homemaker. job on the planet, right? I don't yeah. know about you, but cooking a meal three times a day and finding something that everyone likes is really hard. Okay. Yeah. So here's something that I can encourage you guys to do is you're going to find your people. And the way that you can do that is on social media. You just put in the hashtag and you can type, you can type in cooking or homemaking, or motherhood, or um, homesteading, whatever it is, and you're going to find 10 accounts that you are really interested in, because this is the long haul, right? We want to get to know people that are our people. If I tried to put in MMA, and I was going to go follow someone, they would see right through me that that I don't know anything about MMA. Like, I'm sure it's amazing, but they would be able to look at me and go, you are not an MMA fighter. Like, really, we don't have a lot of things in common. Um, so I really encourage people to go and seek people that are their people. When you are secure with your audience, your audience will innately trust you and you will grow. OK, so for your cold market, Find 10 accounts and start following them. Follow them every day. It doesn't mean that you have to have a conversation with them every day, but really start engaging, looking at their things, um, finding what they're passionate about. 
then start engaging with them, asking them really honest questions about what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, I'll give you an example. Like I am really, really passionate about gardening and um, herbs. And so I have been talking with a lot of people about making fire cider and building those relationships. And so it's been a really cool experience. Um, we have a gal on our team that loves chickens, like literally loves chickens. She friended people who dressed up like chickens. Like she started to get to know everything about all the chicken people, right? And she had hundreds of accounts that joined her team because of the relationship that they built around chickens and chicken coop and chicken feed and chicken slaughter and all of those things, right? And so when you find your people, it's going to, I promise you, your growth is going to get exponential. So that would be your cold market. You're starting from ground zero. You want to get to know these people organically, okay? And once you start to gain trust with one another and you start to have conversations and they start following you and you start following them and you're asking questions, you can then move them from your cold to your warm market. And then once you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm talking with this girl, like every day we are learning how to do certain things from one another. Oh my goodness. She's going to be at the same convention that I'm going to be at. Oh my gosh. That's when you move them from the warm to the hot market. Okay. So just think of it in, in this essence, your cold market, there's zero trust. You don't know each other at all. Your warm market, you're building trust. You know each other a little bit and your hot market is you trust each other so much and you're she they're posting things that you should buy and you're posting things they should buy and you're buying all the stuff for all the things that you love and um, that's when they're in your hot market okay does that make sense okay <clears throat> perfect um there's other ways that you can do this too um sometimes we'll do lists of like a hundred and that just means i'm going to follow 10 accounts and then i'm going to find like i'll follow 10 cooking accounts 10 people that do herbs 10 people that do photography 10 people that homestead, 10 people that love hiking, whatever it is, my 10 favorite things. And then within those 10 words, I follow 10 accounts. And so that if you, if you're, if you're like gutsy and you're like, I'm going all out, then do a hundred. Like that, this is your list. This is your business. But I just tell people getting started and like understanding how the movement and the flow goes. Sometimes starting at 10 is a really good number. Okay. Here is why, here is why it's so important to know your business. And I love the hot, warm, and cold market an analogy, the drawing, and having things on paper. I love visuals in front of me so I can see who I've been talking with, who I've been connecting with, who's been interested, who's asked me questions. And you can do that all on a spreadsheet of, okay, I have this person now in my warm market and they've asked me 15 questions. And you can keep track of all of that. You can keep track of people who are like, okay, you will you let me know when the Aria goes on sale? And you're like, of course I will, right? And keep that as a list. So when we have a sell or you have your share YL code now, you can be like, hey, I have a share YL code. You automatically get 10% off of that Aria. So I want to send that to you. So you have everything written down and you have them in your mind and you have your, you know who's in your hot market, you're warm and you're cold at all times. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a quick story here. So many moons ago, probably I wanna say eight years ago, nine years ago, I um, was on social media like daily and I was really just connecting with so many people and that included people from high school, people that I hadn't seen in years. And I was really like focused on what was going on in people's lives. And the reason why I wanted to do that is so that I knew what my market needed from me. And what I mean by that is I was seeing a lot of moms post about their kids going back to school and not being able to sleep or that they were really anxious and had anxious feelings. And that allowed me to start making posts about sleep about anxious feelings, about back to school without even saying their name because I know that they saw my stuff and I knew that I would be appealing and I would be posting to my target markets. And sometimes that's so important for us because when we lose sight of that, we lose sight of what our market needs. And so just hopping on your social media, I just say like social media can be used for such profound, beautiful ways if we spend the appropriate amount of time on it, right? We don't want to get sucked into it. 
Um, so I encourage you to hop on, look at your people, look at your feed of the people that are popping up and look at what they're posting about. That will give you a really good indication of how you need to, to go about your business and what you need to post. Okay. So many moons ago, nine years ago, I had a girlfriend from high school. She was posting about her, both her sons had caught, um, hand, foot and mouth. And I had watched her over the course of a couple of days and she was sharing everything that she was doing. And in my heart, I'm like, okay, this is going around. And I know a whole bunch of moms who are posting about it in one of our big forums. And I have seen profoundly what these products are doing for their children. I feel like I'm doing such a disservice if I don't reach out to her and at least tell her about them. So I want you to think about it in this way. This is my warm market. This is somebody that I went to high school with. I had built trust. I had classes with her. We were friends in high school, but I hadn't talked to her literally in 20 years. I knew that I had built and established that trust that I felt really comfortable with reaching out to her. And I just said to her, I said, hey, oh my gosh, I know it's been so many years, but I have been watching what you have been going through with your sons. And I am so sorry, but I will tell you that I have some mom friends who are going through the same thing and I have something that's working for them. Would you be open to me sharing that with you? And she is like, I will do anything at this point. I am desperate. So I said, can I bring you something and you just try them and let me know how it works for you? And she was like, yes. Two days, I think it was two or three days later, she reached out to me and said, Nikki, my kids are like 95% better. Everything else that I was doing was not working. And whatever you gave me, this stuff, it works. And it works so well. And I will tell you that my mom and I want to come over. We've been looking at all your stuff that you post. And we want to buy a kit and we also want to learn more about this, whatever this business is that you're doing, because we want to be able to help other moms too. And I will tell you, that is the top of my fourth leg and her mom is also on our team. And had I been so afraid to share and to reach out and withhold all of this great information from her, I wouldn't have them on our team. And I always think to myself, gosh, can I imagine even what that would be like? I think about how Melissa reached out to me when I was asking her a ton of questions and her willingness to share with me. She forever changed my story. And I think we have to go back to those little moments, those basics. We always say, go back to the basics. You really have to go back to the basics. Look at your audience, look at your market, see where you're at and restructure and refigure out. Like if you're in a rut right now, get out of your rut and, and do this. Try this for 30 days and see how it helps you. And if you've moved and you've shifted people around, replace those people and start new serving tree. Um, I'd love to share that story. And I also want to tell you, there's been so many times where I've shared with people different things and different benefits. And they've said, you know, I'm good for right now. Or yeah, I'm, you know, I'll reach back out to you. And that's okay, because it might be a no for now, but maybe down the line, it won't be. And here's why. A lot of people, because this is what we've been taught, we've been taught about Western medicine, right? We have been taught about certain ways going through life and what to grab and where to go and who to see. And sometimes that serves us. And then sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes down the line, we realize, goodness, I've tried all of these Western ways and they're not working very well for my body. And I really am seeking some, something different. And so they will come to you. And here's why, because you have been consistent, because you know your target market, because you have been sharing consistently and you know your people and they innately will trust you because you are consistent and you are sharing over and over and over again. So just think about that too. And a lot of times people need to see things at least 17 times before they will trust you and before they will ever buy from you. So if you feel like, oh, I shared Ningxia five times and nobody has come to me, it's okay. Maybe they're sitting in your cold market and that trust hasn't been built, but keep going, keep engaging because I promise you that over time you will become their person. 
And then um, lastly, again, it doesn't matter if you have just started out, you're brand new, or you're an RCD, we all have to do the basics. Our number one way to grow our business is always engaging, always being consistent, and always growing our business. And if we're not doing that, we will become stagnant and we will see over time that our businesses will decline. Here's an example of that. Um, Annie Hauser is one of my most favorite people on the planet. She is just such a beautiful, uh, giving, just wonderful, wonderful human. Anyways, she has shared this at one point and it has stuck with me. And she said that she was a hairdresser at one point. And even though she was slammed and she was full and she really couldn't take on any more clients. Like she was completely booked. Every available spot was taken. She still had open door. She was willing to take on new clients. Here's why. And I was talking with another girlfriend of mine who is um, my hairdresser. And we were talking about this and she was giving me examples. She said, here is why we always have an open door, even though we're booked. Because maybe our client, maybe we royally mess up their hair, right? Because that can happen and they get really angry with us and they decide they're going to go somewhere else. We've lost a client. We might have a client who loses their job and they can no longer afford the luxury of coming to see their hairdresser. They lose the client. Maybe their customer has a spouse who was relocated and they have to pick up and move. They've just lost that client. And so as a hairdresser, your business is ever evolving. And so that door always has to be open. Think about that in your own business as well. Knowing your cold, warm, and hot markets are so vital because growth is important and keeping in contact with all of those people is important because as a leader, we maybe have a customer who maybe lost their job and can no longer afford to be on loyalty rewards. And we all know that loyalty rewards is our bread and butter. You can enroll 50 people every month and you're going to get that wonderful bonus, but it is not long term, right? Because the next month, you're going to have to enroll the same amount of people to get the same amount of pay. So if we can educate those people at the same time that we're sharing with them and getting them on loyalty, or I'm sorry, and sharing with them about all the products and helping them see the potential and the benefits of using those products long term, that is going to be your bread and butter. That's called residual income. That means you are going to have income coming in every month because those orders are promised, right? You might also have somebody who's doing the business who decides, you know what, um, right now I just have to take a step back. I'm caring for an Elaine parent and I can't focus on my business right now. And you lose that loyalty rewards or you lose that person doing the business. And so always think about your business is ever evolving and take care of it and love it and serve it and honor your people. Um, and I promise you with having systems in place and knowing where your business is every single day, every single moment, you will continue to grow. My last question for you is how many of you guys look at your virtual office every single day? right? That's a good question to ask yourself. If you don't, I encourage you to start because getting in your virtual office is going to provide a lot of answers for you. It's going to let you know if orders aren't processing. It's going to let you know if people are falling off, if they're going to all of a sudden no longer be active. It's going to show you brand new people or who are coming in. It's going to show you your team who are enrolling people where you can congratulate them. Um, it's going to show you a list of people that you can reach out to and say hello to and provide and offer additional support. So I encourage you guys to get into your virtual office, really, really go around. I also encourage you to do this. The last thing here is to write down your OGV every day. So when I was first starting, it was amazing. I went into the virtual office. I was one person, right? I saw my name. There was nobody below me. And then all of a sudden, month after month after month, you see that growth and you see a growth in your OGB and you see new people there and you see them enrolling new people. And it's really amazing to look back month after month to see your growth because sometimes we look at our business and we're hard on ourselves and we'll say, we had no growth this month. 
But then when we actually go back and look at the numbers, you know, we actually had growth. So I hope that these simple steps of understanding your hot, warm, and cold markets really help you see the benefits to doing these, um, these like little serving lists. Um, do you guys have any questions? I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> Can I ask yeah. you a question? Um, um, what about somebody who has um, like <laughs> fallen off and hasn't ordered maybe, a, and would you consider that person still to go into like our hotter, warm market? Yeah, Try so I would just agree. ask yourself, regardless of what their ordering status is, Ask yourself how much trust has been built. How well do you know that person? So maybe it's somebody you've never met ever. Maybe it's somebody else on your team who enrolled them and you don't know them. It doesn't mean that you can't reach out to them or it doesn't mean that you can't ask that person who enrolled them to say, hey, how is your relationship with this person? I would love for them to know that there's a sell going on for Ninja Red and maybe they haven't, maybe they used to purchase it and they haven't used it in some time. And maybe they'd love to know that there's a sale going on. So I love to have even printing out your list. If you have, um, you know, you can even print a personal list, like all your personally enrolled to know who all your people are month to month to see who's falling off, to see who you need to connect with. Um, but for the people that are enrolling on your team that you don't even know, I typically will go back to the person who enrolled them because it's sometimes really uncomfortable to reach out to people that you absolutely don't know. So I would definitely reach out to the people who enrolled them. But if it's your personally enrolled and they've fallen off, you have already built that trust with them because they enrolled with you. So I would keep them in your hot market. It's just a matter of they don't currently have YL in their life. Let's get YL back into their life. So let's start that connection piece again. And then I think also look at your personally enrolled every single month and say, have I connected with this person in the last 30 days? And I encourage you to do it at the beginning of the month because it can look really suspicious to people when all of a sudden on the last day of the month, they're like, oh, Anne Marie's reaching out. I wonder why, you know, and so make it very organic. Just check in with them, ask them how you can serve them. I always like to ask, hey, are there any Young Living products in your home that you have that you've never even opened or tried that maybe I can answer questions about. And sometimes that helps the conversation going, get going. Does that help? Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Any other questions? Okay. Awesome. I'm going to ask another one. Yes. Okay, I, I don't want to hog this. Hog this. Um, I kind of off, I guess, from a little bit of this, but when you're saying that you reach out to people, do you actually reach out to your personally enrolled every single month in some way? Me personally, yes. I try to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's because typically my personally enrolled are all people that I know. So I know that either I'm, even if it's a heart on a post, or it's saying, um, it, or it's saying happy birthday. I will tell you that I have had so many friends buy from me because I have reached out and said happy anniversary or happy birthday. Because what that does is it puts me back in their algorithm, and so they start seeing my stuff. So if you're engaging with them, even if you're not having a full blown conversation with them your posts will start to get in their algorithm and they'll start to see them. And so, yes, in some way, people that I've personally enrolled, I try to reach out to them, whether it's inviting them to a class or checking in on their kids or asking them how their weekend away was in Santa Barbara or whatever it might be. But I try to, I try my best. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I always just say, try to do your best to serve and love the people on your team. I always say, love the snot out of them, which is really gross. But when you do, when people feel loved, they will never leave, right? So especially think about that when you are enrolling people or you're onboarding them and you have the system to get them into whatever groups you're putting them in. Um, don't just drop them off and leave them, right? Because then they feel unloved. They don't feel seen. But if we say, hey, oh, you know, there's this brand new video in Spruce Society. I would love for you to watch. Can I check in with you? Or I'm going to send you these two articles on Endoflex because I know that you were asking about 
thyroid care and hormone care. I'm going to send them to you. Can I check in with you later to see if you have any questions? You know, something like that, just to keep that conversation going or a week later saying, hey, I sent you those articles. Um, what questions do you have for me? So that it's not a yes or a no, it's a engagement question. Yeah. Now you guys have all the tools. There's so many amazing resources and um, just know that we're all here for you. Every single person, I always say it doesn't matter what rank you are. It's how involved and engaged you are. Like reach out to people that you really are finding are active and doing this business and really engaging and loving their customers and ask them like, Hey, what are you doing right now? That's working. Or I see you posting all of these things. Like, where are you getting ideas to do those things? So that will give you guys some ideas too. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming. I know this time of night is so hard for so many and I just, I honor your time and I'm so thankful that you allowed me to share with you. All right. Thank well, you have so a good night. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, you guys.